Hey guys, how you doing? It's the Honeydew Carpenter, and today I'm going to be talking about one critical element of building with Aircrete that is just going to allow you guys to expand your horizons and build, uh, logistically speaking, in different configurations than what I did when I built Grandpa's shop behind his house. If, if you've ever wanted a foam generator or a foam mate, to be able to do projects like this or pour aircrete like we pour aircrete and make it into blocks or build whatever you want, planters, flower beds, go to our Etsy store, Honeydew Carpenter Shop on Etsy. You can also get to it at our website, honeydewcarpentershop.com. When I built that building and planned it, I originally planned on all the building blocks being small enough that they could be lifted by hand. Well, in an afterthought, I decided to do the gables in a one-piece unit, and it made them quite heavy because they were quite large panels. Well, that being said, um, I had to come up with a way to lift them into place. Mrs. Honeydew did a review video of the Aircrete shed build, and wow, most of the comments were centered around this lifting uh, apparatus that I used. Uh, you know, what kind of winch did you use to lift those gables? Do you have a close-up of your lifting platform? Looks like something I could really use. Um, I would like to see that too. Uh, I'd be curious to know that as well. How much did the lifting hoist cost to build? And things like that. So I'm going to go through the different, uh, the concept and the different components of building a hoist system like this so that you guys can recreate it. And what this will allow you to do is build bigger wall panels that might be heavier and have the logistic support to get them into place and lift them and do whatever you need to do to uh, build a building the way you want to build a building using Aircrete. I am going to take you through the concept and how I came up with the ideas, the cost of it, the different components, the build, the assembly of it on site as just an erector set and whatnot, and the usage of it, as well as um, there's going to be a bonus video at the end where I was able to use this for something completely unrelated and different. So guys, from a conceptual standpoint, I knew when I was going to build this hoist that I needed a ballast platform. Just a rigid platform about the size of a medium-sized pallet that I could put some weight on. Um, I also knew that I needed to have a mast that would come up and it would go up about 12-14 feet to allow me to winch these things through a pulley system high enough to put them where I wanted to put them. I also knew that I had to have some wheels on it and I had to make it somewhat mobile on the cement slab so that I could move it from end to end and lift the beams and do the things that I needed to do with it. One of the main components of it that it had to have was it had to have a jib on it. Uh, a jib is just um, something from a crane boom that sticks outward and it needed to stick out far enough so that it could lift from on the other side of a wall and the crane be set on the inside of the building. You know, if your needs are different and you need it to be taller, it can be taller as well. It really doesn't matter. If you want to get right into the build, you can skip ahead to the 10 minute mark. I spend a little bit of time up front going through and sourcing the materials from Army Surplus. If you want to watch that, you can watch it as well. Thanks guys. Dude, I am at one of my favorite places in the whole world. Yeah. Look, Army Surplus Warehouse. You can find them at armysurpluswarehouse.com. If you want to get kind of a sense for the hugeness because it's huge of this army surplus warehouse you can go to their Facebook page and they got a ton of pictures and stuff but today I, I am in my wheelhouse I am just gonna create something out of nothing I um, was telling Mrs. Honeydew how we're gonna lift the gable ends up on the shed because they weigh about 140 pounds or so and I said, we're going to put two ladders and she'll carry one side and me. And she's like, uh-uh. You have to figure out some hoist system. And I was like, okay. It's on. So I am just going to make a real lightweight hoist system. 
uh, for lifting the beams and the gable ends up for the roof system. So this is going to be fun, guys. Let's get to it. I don't even know what I'm going to find, but you know what? It's going to be cool. I know that much. So there was this bin right there full of these boxes with these deals just covered in styrofoam. I don't know why I was drawn to it and I opened one up because it says on it it says uh, spacer bump stock stop one E it's just army surplus stuff and I opened it up and that's what it is right there a piece of steel with a half inch hole through it now that's cool I could make some roller wheel system for my hoist. I think I might be getting about four of those. As I was walking down this huge corridor with all these bins, these bolts caught my eye. They're half inch bolts. They could go through the and be an axle. Oh, look at these pins. Look at those. They're just pins. Oh, and they're heavy. Oh, and these are super light. I think they must be titanium or something. Oh, I'll be needing some of those. Half inch bolts. Those could go right through the half inch hole in that deal and make my wheels. I wasn't going to make wheels on it, but I am now. Yeah, fuel tank mounts for a truck. I could also use those to make my base. Basically, I'm going to make a ballast base to put heavy stuff on, like some bags of cement. And then I'll use that to ballast for my hoist. Oh. Look at, look at those, guys. I could use that as the feet on the front of it. This piece of C-channel with some, kind of some feet on the end. Huh. I got all sorts of choices. Oh wow, guys. Look at this. 10 foot sticks of all thread. 10 foot sticks of all thread. 3 8 all thread. Oh my. Those could be used. They might be 12 foot sticks. He's got thousands of them. Those could be used for my braces. I wonder what he'd give me those for. Oh, look at these huge, heavy pieces of steel. Oh my gosh. Okay. Look at that. Oh, even better, these lighter weight ones. I don't know, I like the, I like the more rigid one. I can imagine those with the wheels on it. There's where I get my barrels. There's my new trailer that Mrs. Honeydew got me for my birthday. Super excited. Okay guys. Check this out. Remember I was talking about those 3 8 all thread that are like 10, 12 feet long? I'm pretty sure those would, would screw right onto the ends of it. That's, that's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. I love it. So, um, I got everything I need for the hoist. I even got some wheels to put on it so I'll be able to crank it down little feet that'll make it solid and then when you crank it up you'll be able to roll it around. Um, what I have to work with here is a steel pallet that I got at Army Surplus. I have uh, what is it? I just looked in my bone pile and I had a one by one 
stick maybe 13 or 14 feet long and a full stick of angle that's eighth inch by one and a quarter and oh probably a 12 foot stick of angle that's one inch by one and a quarter so that's what I have to work with hand winch crank small portable um, I guess little crane a little teeny crane so you guys are gonna think the honeydew carpenter is weird because of the stuff I keep your face isn't but, in there oh there <laughs> awesome I just grabbed this old cooler full of bearing and bearing housing oh look at that I could use that for a pulley that is an actual this came out of the boom of a actual crane. It's a telescoping boom. It had a quarter inch cable running through it, high strength cable, and it was replaced. And I kept it all these years. I'm going to use it on my crane. Why did you keep it all these years? So that when I needed to build a crane, uh, I would have it. I'm going to go get you the speaker. Okay. And look at these. Look at these bearings I kept. Like, who would use those? I don't know. I think I'm going to use them for wheels. I'm going to put some wheels on this thing. And, uh, I'm also going to have some crank down outriggers that just go down and steady it. But, look at that. I welded this together yesterday. I just tacked it. It's not completely welded together, as you can tell. To make it strong, I'm going to have to kind of triangulate it. And that's what I'm going to do with this piece over here. Okay, guys, so now you can see the threads are not buggered up you can get stuff on and off and if you try and cut this without doing that sometimes it's just a bear to get it going again so can you put this axle through for me can you put it through oh you got it good job good job okay can you put that axle through for me D'Artagnan Okay, yeah. there you go, good job. <laughs> We need some stabilizers on the front part. I welded a couple of these nuts into the corner of here and then I just made a T-handle with all thread. I also want to be able to replace the all thread so all this is is a double nut on the T-handle. Once I get that screwed through I'm gonna want a little bit of a foot uh, for this to 
screw down to the concrete to stabilize it, back weld it in there, and then I'll grind it smooth and that'll be my stabilizing foot. There's one on each corner. It's not terribly heavy. But it doesn't need to be. But now but now I'm going to uh mount the pulleys at the top. And I want a, a little jib system that reaches over the wall because it'll be on the inside of the building. So I'm going to bolt these two pulleys between some angle iron and then I'll have an arm, a leverage arm, hooked to a rope out here. And so when you get the gable end up to where it needs to be, you can just pull that leverage arm and leverage it right up over the top of the bearing wall and just crank it down. So I'm going to build that part right now. You'll see how it works when the video comes out. It'll be awesome. So I took those pulleys and I sandwiched them between two pieces of angle iron. And essentially this is what it looks like. I'm just going to take a U-bolt that I had laying around and U-bolt this thing to the uh, center arm of the boom down about the height where I want to crank it. I just finished mounting the winch. I'll show you a close-up on that. Bolted it around. Hey guys, how you doing? It's the Honeydew Carpenter. Today we are working on this. You can see the crane in the background, the gable ends are all put up, the beams are in their slots, and um, I built that crane specifically just to do this because Mrs. Honeydew said I had to figure out some way to hoist that stuff up that she wasn't going to help me lift it. <laughs> so anyways, that's what we're working on today. Let, let's show you how we did it and get started. I'll put the outriggers down so it won't roll on me.
what are you doing? Oh, I'm this Aircrete, this new mix, even though it's super light, it's still, I mean, look at the bubbles in it. I, it's a pain in the butt. You can't even chip it out. I mean, you can, but it just, oh, there we go. It's such a good mix. Hey babe, are you laying down on the job? No, I'm holding the grass down. Oh, and Tin D'Artagnan is holding you down? Yeah. Okay, let's look in here at these gables. Holy cow, those things ended up looking so nice. We're on the inside of the building, there's a window. It's a dual effort. There's our little jib system.
Ya está aquí. Hey guys, if you like what we're doing here, give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe. Be sure and click the bell at the bottom to get notifications. If, if you've ever wanted a foam generator or a foam mate to be able to do projects like this or pour aircrete like we pour aircrete and make it into blocks or build whatever you want, planters, flower beds, go to our Etsy store, Honeydew Carpenter Shop on Etsy. You can also get to it at our website honeydewcarpentershop.com Hey guys, how you doing? It's the Honeydew Carpenter. This next video is one that Mrs. Honeydew could not wait for us to put out. <laughs> because it is classic Darwin, as she calls it. But whenever you're growing a business and you have limited resources and you're wanting to step things up and whatnot, sometimes you have to get real creative to get things done. We had a great friend of ours just a town south of here that wanted to donate something to our cause and he had a air compressor that he was not using. Now this thing is a monstrosity. It is a commercial air compressor meant for a business. I mean, it's a foot taller than I am. It, and we had no way of getting it onto our trailer. And so, of course, earlier um, this past year, I built a small little hoist to hoist the gable ends up on the Air Creek building. And I told Miss Honeydew, I go, oh yeah. I think we can do it. We'll just put a little bit more ballast on it and make the pallet a little bit heavier and we can get it done. So during the process of unloading it, it started raining on us and we had to put a tarp over our ballast because what we used for weight on it was bags of cement. We didn't want them to turn to bricks. But we had a good time so I hope you enjoy this one. Good job. All right. Steve, do you care if I put you on YouTube? <laughs> well, if you got a shatter resistant lens, I guess it'd be okay. <laughs> See how that works? What are you doing now, Darwin? Um, I'm attaching the support cables for the... Dude, don't stand up. Just look at the camera and answer me. <laughs> I'm attaching the support cables for the crane, baby. Okay. What were you doing just a minute ago? You were sitting there wiggling it while I was trying to get it put together. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, you would. <laughs> <laughs> hey, show me your muscles. Yeah, it kind of, I saw the trailer move down a little bit.
Hey guys, if you like what we're doing, give us a thumbs up. Be sure and like, subscribe, and click the bell at the bottom to get notifications. We have a lot of really cool projects coming up that are just going to be some epic air creep projects. Awesome.